Hello coding stars! Recently, I was looking around YouTube and the YouTube algorithm led me to this adorable cat meme called the Popcat. So I was like, wow, this is adorable. Can I do something fun with this? So I made a simple website out of it. Today, we are going to make the Popcat meme into a website. As you can see, when we press the pop button, the Popcat will open his mouth and make the sound. And if we release the mouse, he will close his mouth and make the sound. In this tutorial, you will be learning two things. Firstly, we will learn how to switch between two images. And secondly, we will learn how to add sound effects using JavaScript. For this tutorial, you will need the two images of the Popcat and the two audio files and... So, let's get it started! In the project directory, we have the images folder, which has the close.png and the open.png. And in the sound folder, we have the two mp3 files, which are the popping sounds. Let's start by creating an empty HTML file called the index.html. And let's create the blank HTML template and change the title to popcat. And inside the body tag, we will add the wrapper div. And inside that, we will add an image tag. And for the source attribute, we will add the image of the popcat with his mouth closed. And we will make the ID of the image tag popcat. And after that, let's make a button tag with the text pop. And we'll give the ID of btn. This is how it looks in our browser. Now let's make a new CSS file called the style.css. And we will link the CSS file inside our HTML file just like this. And in the CSS file, let's style it. So let's start styling the body first. So we want the height to be 100 VH so that the body tag fills the entire screen and the background color black. And for the layout, we are going to use the flex box, justify content center and align item center. Now we can see the pop get and the button is centered inside the body tag. And now let's work on the wrapper. Also, for the wrapper layout, we're going to use the flex box. So display flex and flex direction column. So the layout of the popcat and the button is vertical. And justify content center, align item center. It's looking fantastic. And let's make the size of the popcat image. So width of 400 pixels. And now let's style the button. So we want the width to be 150 pixels. In height, 70 pixels, font size 2EM, letter spacing 3 pixels. So we have 3 pixels between each letter and border 3 pixel solid and this nice beige color. It's looking good. And we want the background color to be transparent. And let's make the color of the text same as the border. Margin top 40 pixels. So we want the 40 pixels margin above the button and user select none. So now this button text cannot be highlighted by the user. And we don't want any outlines when the button is focused. So outline none. And when the button is clicked, we want to change the color of the border. So we want a dark gray color for the border and the same color for the text of the button. Let's try it. It's looking good. So when I click the button, you can see the color changing to dark gray. So now let's work on responsiveness of our website. When we view this website in a smaller devices, such as tablets and mobile phones, we want to shrink the size of the popcat. For example, if you go to the developers mode and try to shrink the size of the screen, here we can see that the popcat is cutting out. We don't want that to happen. So back to CSS, we are going to add media query. So screen when max width is 480 pixels. So we want the size of the popcat to be 200 pixels in width. So what this code does is that when the screen size is equal or less than the 480 pixels in width, the width of the popcat image will change to 200 pixels. If we have a look in the browser, you can see that the popcat size is changing depending on the width. 
Before we finish off with the CSS, let's make the border of the button a little bit round so that it looks more pretty. So inside the button, border radius, 30 pixels. Now we can see that the button looks more prettier. Okay, now let's start working on some JavaScript. So in the project directory, we're going to make a new file called the main.js. And going back to the HTML file, let's link the JavaScript file. So inside the script tag, source main.js. And we will give the differ attribute. And going back to the main.js, let's implement something cool. Firstly, let's create some references to the DOM elements. So the first one will be reference to the popcat document query selector and the ID was popcat and the second one is the button same the query selector and the ID was btn and don't forget to hashtag sign for the ID now let's make the two variables for the images the, so the first image will be the one with the open mouth so we are going to store the directory of the image And for the second one, it will be the closed mouth image. Going great. And now it's time to make the two audio objects which will make the popping sounds. So the first one will be the sound for the mouth opening. So new audio. And then the directory of the mp3 file. And we'll do the same thing for the mouth closing sound. Awesome. Now it's time to do something that's even cooler. We're going to make two functions that will perform switching images and playing sounds. So the functions which will perform the cool stuff. So the first function will be open mouth. So when this function is called, it will change the source attribute of the popcat to the open mouth image. And then it will play the sound of the mouth opening like this and then the second function will be called close mouth and it will perform the same thing it will switch image to the close mouth image and play the close mouth sound like this and now let's connect these functions to event handlers the event handlers we are going to create two event handlers one for the open mouth function and the other one for the close mouth function and the button element will be the one listening to the event so add event listener. So the first event will be the mouse down event. And this will call the open mouth function. And copy the first event handler and paste it underneath. And we will simply change the event to mouse up. So what these code does is that when the mouse is down, which means it's pressed, the open mouth function will be called. And when the mouth is up, which means when you lift up your finger from the mouth, it will call the close mouth function. So let's change it quickly. Close mouth. There you go. So let's try it. So when you press your mouth down like this, it will play the open mouth sound. And when you release the mouth, it will play the closed mouth sound. It's looking awesome. Before we finish, just one more thing. When it comes to touch screens like mobiles and tablets, the mouse down and the mouse up event behavior is a little bit strange. So we will add separate event listeners for the touch screens. So the previous handlers were for the desktops. And the one we'll be creating will be the ones for touch screens. So same as before, button, add event listener. But this time, the name of the event is called a touch start. And when the touch start event occurs, this function will be called. So this E here represents the event itself. So the first we will prevent the default behavior so that it doesn't get mixed up with the two previous event handlers. And then we will call the open mouth function like this and just copy and paste the whole event handler and simply change the event to touch end and from open mouth we will change it to close mouth function there you go because we use the separate event handlers for the mobiles and the tablets so this website will be working just fine on the touch screens as well yay we did it now it's time to test it out it's working awesome in the desktop. Let's test it on the mobile's environment as well. So going to the developers tool and click this button. 
So when we change the size of the screen, it's fully responsive, it's looking great, and using the buttons, it's working awesome. Good work! Special thanks to the Popcat for letting us have so much fun coding. GitHub repository containing all the files and the source code used for this tutorial are provided in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, please don't forget to subscribe.